Okay, so this one goes to um, all of you, especially Dale and Leach, because you mentioned something about it. But in the world of our t alternative facts, apparently are facts now, how would each of you address the issue of climate change through political uncertainty? Because apparently politicians think of themselves now as scientists, which is not the fact. And I took a class in college that we talked about how there's this politicized issue of climate change. And how I guess how would you first address the issue of alternative facts being thrown in the mix of dealing with issues, whether it's like health, healthcare issues or climate change, but also what can what could you bring to the table to help combat this issue? Because if we don't have a stable environment, we can't do a lot of things. So, thank you. Okay, the acoustics are terrible. As I understand it, alternative facts and climate change, just real quick. Um, first of all, in terms of alternative facts, you've got to keep saying the real facts. And in order to do that, and sometimes I watch television and people who are on my side of the issue, I want to pull my hair out. But I've actually done a little of that. Um, because I don't feel they're that good at it. Um, and it's important, there's a Bob Dylan line that says, I will know my song well before I start singing. And so you really need to know what you're talking about on these issues. That's really important. Uh, and, and be very aggressive about combating. Because they, there, there's billions of dollars being spent to confuse people about climate change every year. It's real quick on the issue itself. There are several things you can do. And the beauty of these things is they actually have conservative components to it. I mean, cap and trade is a free market solution to climate change. We decide every year how much carbon we want to put into the air and lower it every year. And then we give businesses an amount of carbon that they're allowed to put in the air that they can sell. That gives them an incentive to innovate. Um, and, uh, you know, it, 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 it allows companies that aren't as good to continue to operate. They just have to buy the credits. Um, but ultimately, it still comes down as a global thing every year. So the same thing with the carbon tax. These are, these are actually conservative ideas uh, with a, a progressive result. And I think it's important we do that because the political reality is, you know, it'll be nice someday to have 60 hardcore progressives in the Senate, the majority in the House and the President. That's not where we are now. So we need to try to find solutions. And I find often, just real quick, we can do this. I mean, two states, I talked about the death penalty earlier, two very red states voted to eliminate the death penalty. Deeply Republican states, Nebraska and Utah. Why? Because it was too expensive. Now, that's not the same reasons maybe I have, but who cares? If they vote for it, we get the votes and we get it done. We can have different reasons for supporting things. Let's just try to solve problems. On your first question, science is real, period. I mean, it's real. Um, I want to also point out that my team, two of them, were just most recently at 350.org, um, the Women's Organization about Climate Change. Another, my other team member led the finance and like, uh, pipelines in Lancaster County. Um, so just very fundamentally, we're very um, aware of this, this topic and we'll fight hard for it. Uh, very, in, in terms of local issues, against the pipelines uh, that are coming through both uh, Chester County and Lancaster County. Um, I'm not aware if there are any that are coming through the 16th district in Reading, but further it works. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're not in favor of that, and we think that that is enriching oil and gas executives over private landowners and even taxpayers, and what is the benefit to us as a community for these pipelines and extractive industries in general in Pennsylvania. Um, that being said, I also have an MBA with a focus on sustainability and looking at have the, the focus on how business can be good for both people and planet and profit. Uh, this is the wave of the future, folks, right? So this is what millennials and uh, my job, Gen X, like this is what and many of you who are not maybe in that generation too also agree. There are, this is the growing wave and it's good for business to be uh, sustainable, to be green, to be looking at the long term rather than the short term. I think that um, you look at investments over the long term and see that uh, things that are short have short-term view actually perform worse over time. Things that have longer-term view and that are good for business are, are actually, or are sustainable are actually good for business. So I think part of what I would want to do from a business perspective is make a case for a return on investment in re 
renewable energies and sustainable energies in conservation rather than investing in extractive industries that have a quick payoff but don't actually benefit the community. So I would bring that kind of ROI perspective um, as a progressive speaking to like business interests because for God's sakes it's the right thing to do. Um, and, and there's really like the right economic thing to do too. So that's what I would do. Um, as far as alternative maps go, I return my idea of education. We need critical thinking, period, the end. We would not have alternative facts if people just did just let go of this fact that I know because it sounds right to me. No, facts are facts. So critical thinking and media literacy is our way to get away to combat um, alternative facts. Environment. Um, the people who are the non-believers, the deniers, I think there's a two-pronged approach that, that could work. One, Let's just be good stewards of the earth. Let's, on a practical level, why do we need to, to just think about people carving out, you know, if you, if you have a, a sphere and you carve things out, Oklahoma is now the, has more earthquakes than California, right? Because they're digging and digging and digging. We need to be good stewards. Secondly, we can argue on a financial basis. It has now become financially advantageous for people to use, for example, wind. Rick Perry, governor of Texas, when somebody told him that, guess what, we can use the, this wind stuff for free, he went bonkers and he, he has, Texas now, you know, land of the wait, black oil, Texas tea, <laughs> uh, is now the land of the propellers, all right? And within that, there are, when you can, uh, compare uh, coal mining jobs of 70,000 across the way compared to wind, wind uh, uh, turbine, turbine engineers, 600,000 jobs. They can't employ people fast enough. It's to our economic advantage.